How's it going, everybody? Josh, KI6NAZ. Today, we're going to be looking at the Heil Parametric Receive audio system. Does this unlock the hidden potential of your radio? Let's take a look. Now I should note going into this review, obviously I have a relationship with Heil Sound and Bob Heil thanks to Ham Nation. I'm not gonna call this a review. This is purely a demonstration of this device. I'm not calling it a review specifically because I don't want people to take an assumption that I'm giving them a free positive review, is whichever way I go with this, uh, because of them sending it to me or my relations with Bob Heil and Ham Nation, of course. So today we're just gonna have a bit of fun. We're gonna play around with the device. I'm gonna talk a little bit about my experiences with it and my thoughts. Right up front, the Parametric Receive Audio System Equalizer, or the Praise Q, sells for $240 on Heil Sound's website. Also, I am running the HPS5 speaker along with it that is a powered speaker. It is about $179 on the Heil Sound website. A couple of things right up front, the input and output jacks for this device are quarter inch on the input, one eighth on the input, and XLR, three pin XLR on the input to the PRSQ system. P-R-A-S-E-Q system. And it takes an XLR output and quarter inch output into the speaker. Both the speaker and the equalizer run off of 12 volt power. So if you have an Anderson's block like I do off of a power supply, this will work just fine for you. Now the claim for the P-R-A-S-Q system is that it is focusing its amplification or equalization against the middle portions of the voice audio spectrum that you would hear out of your radio speakers. You are putting that output from your radio into the equalizer and then you are tuning it with the variable knobs that are in front of the unit to get maximum sound output or legibility. Now, when you get it out of the box, all of the knobs are going to be at the 12 o'clock position and they all have a white little dot in the middle and you just point that right up. They should be like that right out of the box with one exception. The frequency space generally wants to be at 2.5 kilohertz. So it'll be slightly off in about the one or two o'clock position. To try and give you a good representation of what the unit sounds like with the powered speaker, I am going to use my Sony shotgun microphone and a Zoom H6 recorder that I have mounted directly to a boom arm that's pointed at the speaker. And we'll go back and forth with the audio. We will test this with both the parametric receive and powered speaker as well as the stock 7610 speakers as well. Obviously, I expect that with a bigger speaker and the level of whatever amplification is going on and the equalization, that this is going to perform a lot better. But hey, who knows? Let's take a listen. Bouncer flying around all over the place. Uh, that guy is uh, bouncing around like Oh, you went out there yesterday. I, I rode uh, uh, out to Yokaipa, but I, I didn't go out to the, uh, the easy way to the 210. I went, uh, uh, we went out to the, the 14, out to the Paraplossum, out to the 138, and uh, and uh, up over the crest line. Uh, VPAKAA-W7WLL. QSL. A rope and rocks. I like that. Go ahead. VPA Tango Alpha Alpha. Very, very and uh, I'm just really surprised the band is, is in good condition. I just came in here to the shack. I have not been very active the, uh, here the last year or so. And Wow, 
All right, he's doing a good job. Uh, go send the hand in with Arima, please. my findings using the system uh, one I like the speaker a lot I think I'm gonna put that speaker up top here like maybe obscured a little bit by some of my pictures and behind a monitor a bit because it is loud enough that you can kind of fill the room a bit with it I found and it does have onboard controls for turning up the volume if you will but you can do most of it right on the parametric receive device and it's really easy to use with that said as far as tuning goes it's true if you leave everything at the 12 o'clock position it works generally okay but however if you watch some of the clips earlier you'll note that in some cases I went for more of the lows or put more of a low pass filter are on so that we could hear some of those people with bassier voices or who were down in the noise a little bit. I found that giving them a little more bias towards the low side actually pulled them out some. It sounded like we had a couple of more feminine voices on the, the radio as well, so uh, kind of accentuated that, going a little bit towards the higher side, adjusted things, and, and really, it's kind of like playing around with sound. I, I know that there's probably a prescribed way to get the most out of this, but to me, and, and probably to you, it's going to be very subjective in how you adjust the controls. So I kind of just adjusted the knobs until I found what I felt to my ear sounded the best. Now, hopefully, I walked through enough of the ranges while we were playing around with the unit that you kind of get an idea of what this is capable of, how effective it is for listening, uh, and possibly adjusting as needed to kind of knock out some noise. I found that that actually worked pretty well, was to use some of the filtering to cut some of the noise out and focus more on a certain portion of the audio of the operator that was talking. That seemed to do pretty well. For those curious, I did hook up my 32 ohm DT77 Pros. These are bare dynamic headphones, fantastic headphones, really good audio headphones for listening, uh, YouTube things. Obviously when I live stream, I use these a lot too, or Zoom calls, whatever. These generally needed a high amount of output under the headphone level. You needed to really give it the beans, if you will, to get some good audio out of these. 
also, something that the 7610 does that I wasn't able to replicate with the parametric receive system is with the 7610, I can split the receivers so I can have the A channel on the left and the B channel on the right so that I could actually be listening to two bands simultaneously with a receive antenna and my active antenna on another band or just have one antenna or two antennas listening to the same frequency and splitting between the two for the best quality audio. It's possible that you can do this and I just haven't figured it out and it may use like a Y cable to bring the two channels into kind of a stereo situation here, but uh, that's something that I'll have to figure out in another time. A couple of notes as we wrap things up here. Stock speakers on radios are generally okay at best and you add in the fact that a lot of them are just top firing meaning the speaker is just shooting up and if you're not redirecting it at the operator it's not really going to sound as full as it can so a system like this is always going to benefit the user or if you have some headphones that is likely going to do the similar job if not better in some cases depending on the audio quality or the quality of the headphones you get Heil makes a whole series of headphones and they are microphone enabled as well for the true ham radio operator because we don't just listen, right? So maybe we want to look at those as well in case you want something that's possibly going to be used for on the go portable. If you're a heavy contester, you may want to split your audio channels and have a boom mic to go along with it. Heil makes all the interesting tools for audio and microphones that you could want for amateur radio. So go take a look at their website. The link is in the description. For those of you that are a good rag chewer, like to listen just ambient without having headphones on, this is a great option. It gets plenty loud and you can amp that up as needed. It doesn't get too loud though and it never really got into a situation where I was overdriving the speaker or got any distorted output or anything like that. So. Yeah, it's was, it was pretty good, pretty enjoyable. And since we're talking about Heil sound, I have a BM17 headphone. This is the single with the one ear cup and the microphone. I think this is like a perfect little setup for going portable. I'll be reviewing this or demonstrating it in a future episode of the Ham Radio Crash Course. So make sure you subscribe so you won't miss that when I post it. A big thank you to everybody at Heil Sound for sending this over for me to take a look at. I really appreciate it. Guys, leave your comments below on your thoughts on this. How did the audio sound? Did you notice much of a difference when I was tweaking the knobs? You know, you can't have one of these videos where we're talking about radios and not say, those are some mighty fine knobs, and they are. I'm Josh, KI6NAZ. Thank you so much for watching. I'll talk to you later. 73.